Well, 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 guess what we have here? A Vancouver Canucks game where the Canucks have a lead, they score some goals really early on, they blow the multi-goal lead, they trail by one, they tie it up, and then they win in a shootout? Carolyn Cameron said it best after the programming that this was a very Canucks-like win. But hey, I actually kind of caught some of it. As I had said earlier in today's show, I was going over to the PE. They had the lights, winter thing, whatever it is going on over there. And it was nice being in that environment, lacing up the skates at the. What's it called? The amphitheater? Yeah, that's what it's called, right? Lacing up the skates over there, going for a public skate. It was very fun. Very nice getting back out there on the ice. But after that was finished, we went home. We turned on the Canucks game and saw the remainder of the third period. And then the overtime and then the shootout. Let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks and just what this win means. I don't want to go out there and start bringing all the analysis on you, breaking down every play and every goal because I didn't see it all live as it happened. In fact, I can just go out there and look at the NHL.com summary, and that's going to be my little sufficient note as to what happened in this game. Give it just two minutes, and the Canucks are already up 2-0 on the game. First goal on the night, it's OEL who throws a long shot towards the goal, and it's tipped out in front by none other than Bo Horvat. Now, this was the first shot of the game, and if you know anything about Jacob Markstrom, it's that for some reason, the guy is so prone to giving up the first shot of the game. I don't know what it is. Like, this happened in Vancouver. This happened in Calgary. Markstrom himself called himself out a few weeks ago saying that he sucks at hockey, but at the same time, he did have a few really good games sprinkled in there between. But first shot of the game, not great for Markstrom to let up. And then the very next shift, you have yourselves a Connor Garland goal where he finds himself open on the side. He's a right-handed shot. He absolutely drags it to the far forehand and he pulls it and snipes it. It's kind of like that glitch short side snipe that you can score in NHL 23. That's kind of the goal that Connor Garland scored here to give the Canucks a 2-0 lead one minute and 48 seconds into the game. Talk about getting off to a good start. We had seen this team have so many good starts. That's been a really consistent pattern for this team, and it definitely does not shy away here. The Canucks then eventually lose a few battles. They end up going down 3-2. It's Backlin, Mangiapani, Trevor Lewis, who all get goals and... I mean, okay, I guess we can go out there and try to break these down because I do have the video footage in front of me here. Not on the screen because that's copyrighted material, but regardless... The power play is where the Calgary Flames get their first goal on the night. Ruzicka, the shot, it deflects out to the side, and oh, that's a tip in front by Backlund. That's a very nice play there by Dylan Dubé to set him up. Next goal scored by Calgary to tie things up at the end of the first period. It's Dubé to Kadri to Mangiapani. Let's see how this one ends up going down. Okay, so the Flames with a breakout. Thrown up to Dubé, who walks right in, circles back on the half boards, shoves it in deep. Nazem Kadri down low, out in front to Mangiapani, who shoots at five hole on Martin. Nice goal. Honestly, good puck movement over there for the Calgary Flames. Nice to see them getting one. And maybe it's hindsight that I'm able to go out there and say that, oh, it's good that they got one because I know the Canucks win in the end. Ha <laughs> ha. Regardless, let's move on with the other goals here. Three minutes into the second period, it's Trevor Lewis assisted by Uyghur and Markstrom. Markstrom got an assist? Really? Okay, let's see how that goes out. Oh, he's the guy behind the net who throws it over to Uyghur. I see. That's how he gets the assist, eh? Uyghur finds Lewis who walks right in. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He split the D. He did everything himself. What a terrible goal for Vancouver to let up. Oh my gosh. I know that was a power play scenario, or it might have been. I'm not sure. But what a goal. Trevor Lewis, I didn't know you had that in him. Then, give it just two minutes later, it's Kuzmenko to Hoaglander and Sheldon Dries who ties things up over here. They get this one going on the rush, which is very nice to see. A reversal in the Canuck zone, sent up to Kuzmenko, Hoaglander takes it into the middle, and it's Dries with the very nice far side fadeaway-esque kind of shot. He's going to the left and shooting to the right, up high on Jacob Markstrom. Hoaglander with two assists on the night, by the way. Very nice to see him getting on the board in more ways than one. 
Then you had yourselves the third period. It was action-packed. There were power plays, there were opportunities, and there were saves. Lots of saves. Really good saves made by both of these guys. The overtime was filled with even more savage saves, especially by Jacob Markstrom. Hoaglander had a really good opportunity on the rush. Miller had the same. Connor Garland with a slap shot at the top of the slot. And then you had yourselves the Mikheyev breakaway. All stopped by one Jacob Markstrom, who really did stand up tall. And based off of what I know about Jacob Markstrom, watching this guy in Vancouver, seeing everything that he's done the past few years, it's really great to see him go out there and actually find a game where he lets up two bad ones at the beginning, or not bad ones at the beginning, but just two goals at the very beginning, and eventually is able to get that confidence back up to where he's playing like this in overtime. Good on him for actually being able to bounce back and make some crazy saves in the process. But then the shootout comes along, and that's where Markstrom gets defeated. Spencer Martin, by the way, suiting up in what I believe is his first shootout ever with the Vancouver Canucks. Somebody's going to have to fact check me on that. They probably said it on the broadcast, but I didn't hear it. Martin made three saves. In fact, one of them, he didn't even make a save. The guy shot the puck wide. But still, Spencer Martin and Jonathan Huberto, he stops the far side one-handed tuck with the extended pad. Second chance against Dylan Dubé. Dubé tries to go backhand. Martin gets the glove in it. It goes wide. And then the third chance by Backlund also tries to go backhand. He ends up missing the net entirely. Meanwhile, Andre Kuzmenko was all the Canucks needed to get things done on Markey. As Kuzmenko comes down with speed, Ilya Kovalchuk style, stops up in the slot, deeks backhand, shoves it forehand, and then he absolutely buries it. He puts all his strength onto his right foot and whips the puck forward. Markstrom couldn't keep up, and you could see he was frustrated after he banged a stick on the ice. Unfortunately for Elias Pettersson, he ended up not scoring on his shootout attempt, but at the end of the day, the Vancouver Canucks, with their fifth beyond regulation win in a row. This team has not won a game in regulation in so long. It's all these overtimes, these shootouts now. The Vancouver Canucks are a team that just likes to get things to extra time, and then they find ways to win there. It's very strange. And Sam Constantino was talking about this on the broadcast, but the team is really close to actually being a playoff Contender, And I say contender because they're right there in the race for the wild card. With all the stuff going around with Bo Horvat, who, by the way, scored his 21st goal on the season today, and all the other drama with trade rumors, Brock Besser, Bo, of course, and then everybody else in between, it's kind of wild seeing the team actually have success in this period and keep things in a place of ambiguity as to when the Canucks should go full-on rebuild, if that's even a possibility that you think they should explore. This team is so strange in that the media, the fans, everybody is so negative because we all know the doom and gloom that has accompanied this season so far, but they're still right there. They are still only a few points out of the wild card, and they have a realistic chance of getting there if they continue winning games. And I just say winning games, not even winning games well, not even winning games like dominating games, just coming out with the win at the end of the day because this team... I mean, every few games that go to overtime, they always seem to pull it out somehow. It's very strange. So, talk to the comments about your thoughts about the Canucks beating the Calgary Flames in Calgary. That's another aspect of this team that I think needs addressing as well. How the heck did they play so poorly at home? But when they're on the road, they always seem to play well. That's very weird, isn't it? Thoughts in the comment section below, though. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Shrolls 99. And, bye.